In this video, I'll show you how to paint the easy to build Mermon Banshees. Let's get started then. This is going to be a pretty easy, straightforward tutorial. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take some Nylac Oxide and uh, we're going to work this all over the model. So just take your time. You don't want it to pull too much, but you do want to get a decent coverage all over. See, this is really, really easy, really straightforward. What you don't want to do uh, is slather this all over the bits of the base because I'll show you how to paint those really quickly as well. It's so easy. Um, and of course, this is going over a, a Corax white base coat. So coverage wise, really simple and what I'll also make sure to do is share uh, two ways that you can do this model so you can either do it completely ghostly and ethereal or you can do it with some kind of real life bits on there as well such as the corset and the the dagger okay so I'll just finish off the rest of this nylac oxide and let that dry fully before we worry about doing anything else So really important that you let that nylac oxide dry. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some Ulthwan Grey and we're going to dry brush the model. And we're just going to circular motions like that all over. And this will pick up the kind of the raised areas. Now I'm using a makeup brush for this because I find them a little softer than like the normal kind of dry brushes you might get from Games Workshop or Army Painter. And I just find that they're better at transferring the paint and give you a nice softer highlight. So I'm just working my way around all the kind of bits that we've done nylac oxide. And what we're looking to do is just blend in. You see there, it's just blending nicely. I want to make sure we get the edges. Be careful because you know it's a fragile plastic model at the end of the day, so you don't want to go too hard and run the risk of damaging uh, the plastic. So I'm just going to work my way all the way around this, and we'll come back and we'll uh, we'll have a look, pop a little highlight layer in probably, uh, and then if you want to keep it like an ethereal ghost, you'll be good to go. So with all that dry brushing done, you've got a really nice translucent effect on the model now. And I'll, I'll leave a link in the description for uh, those makeup brushes I use. They're pretty cheap. Um, it's kind of a longer head soft brush that I was using. So what you want to do next is you just want to take some white scar. And you just want to get this right on the kind of edges of the model. Just to kind of define the sharper parts. Um, so you've got the, the eyes... There, the shape of the face, top of the skull, you know, just like that, really easy, really straightforward. And if you want to skip this stage, you can also kind of these areas where we think that we're going to get a little bit of rundown across the top of the head there, just to kind of fill in some of the dry brushing areas. And then along the back, so we've got all these kind of just these bits here where we just want to run a, a line of white scar down. And if you think it looks a little chalky and you want to go back in with our Ulthu and Grey, then, you know, it's your model at the end of the day. You feel absolutely free, but I'm kind of happy with how this one's turned out. So I'm just going to finish off with all the edges. Get them all in. Uh, get them looking pretty sharp. Okay, her looking pretty sharp. And then we can decide uh, what we want to do next. So a little bit of white highlighting with white scar and this model's looking okay. So if you want to leave it like that, you can. You can go off and you can play with it and be happy. If you want to just do a little bit more detail on it, um, a little bit like the, the Games Workshop website, let's add some more to it. So first off, I'm going to take some Dark Earth Flesh and I'm going to paint this over the corset. So what you'll find is that the shading already on there from all the work that you've done 
will really help kind of give it that nice dark brown leather effect that uh, the heavy metal team have done. And this is a really cheap and cheerful, easy way of doing it. And once you've done the first coat, you can then take your time, and if you want to put a second one on, you can. Uh, if not, you leave it like that, we'll carry on. So I'm going to let that dry. I'm probably going to put it into the dagger holder as well, just, just along here. And then we'll come back and we'll have a look how the model's looking. So as that dries, I'm just going to take some Retributor armor. I'm just going to paint up everything which is going to be gold. So we've got the weapon here, which looks, it's meant to be a dagger, isn't it? But it looks like a sigh. Reminds me of Raphael from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So it's a little bit on there. Nice and straightforward. A little bit maybe on the bottom part of the dagger holder. Careful not to drop it. And there we are. I'll finish that off on the little pommel there. And we'll let that dry. And then we'll uh, come back in and give it a little shade. Just to dull it down. Before I dull that down, I was going to do the silver metallic as well. So I'm going to use iron hand steel for this. And we're just going to use this on the blade of the dagger. Nice and straightforward. Just take your time, make sure you don't go in over anything that you may have already painted. I'm also going to have a look at the kind of holder of the dagger there. So I'm just going to work my way around there and then very carefully just draw a line over model there like that and the other thing I'll do while I've got the silver out is I'll start to paint the fence so again being careful when you come in contact with the model being careful when you come up to parts which you don't want to paint silver such as these vines I'm going to show you a really quick and easy way to paint the base after as well so all contrast paint really quick really effective so to colour this one in, we're going to use some Agrax Earthshade, and this is because the the gold and the metal, ultimately it's just come out of uh, some sort of grave site. It's not going to be shiny, it's not going to be new. So we just want to use the brown Agrax over everything we've just done. Don't be afraid to pop it on. You don't want it to pool, but you do want it to really kind of drill down the the darkness on the model and just be careful when you kind of come to those parts which are close to ones you've already finished. I'm going to do this for the steel on the on the base as well. Just like that. As you can see it really darkens it down a little bit. So I'll finish this off, and then I think that's all the Banshee done. Uh, we'll just come back, I'll show you how to paint the base really, really quickly. So let's paint the base, and um, what we're going to do is we're going to use contrast paint, we're going to paint from light to dark. So the first thing, get a little bit of skeleton horde, and then we want to use this on any skulls we find. And we'll be, there's a couple on this one. Nice and simple, and what we want to make sure we do, it's a bit too much, is make sure everything dries before we move on to the the next colour. So we have two skulls, any other bone, there's another one hiding on the back there. So nice and straightforward, nice and easy. Okay, so let that dry and we'll come back for the next colour. Next up we'll have a go at the rock, so I'm using Basilicarnum Grey for this. Um, I'm just going to move it on, move it around. Probably a little darker than I anticipated it being, uh, which is why I went for it next. But it's on there now, so we'll work with it. Let's just work this around all the kind of stone, the stonework, being careful not to obviously go over anything you've already finished. So get all your stonework done, let it dry fully. And then we'll come back and we'll have a look at the, the vines next. The vines are really easy and straightforward as well. So I'm just using Militarum green contrast paint for these. And where you're kind of going over the wood, you can afford to be a little bit messy. Try and keep it tidy as you go over 
the bits you've already done. And we've got them on the floor as well. Same kind of principle. It's nice and straightforward. There you go. So work your way around the model. Get all your veins, veins, vines, uh, painted. There's a distinct lack of veins with uh, the spirit host. So get them done, and then we'll come back, and I think we'll do the, the roses next. For the roses, I'm going to use some Volupus Pink. Now, Volupus Pink is quite a powerful colour, so you don't want to use too much. i just work it in there, paint it on, being careful not to go over the the vines or the skulls that you may have already done. I think I've got this other one here and I think there's another one on the back hiding. So we'll just finish these up and then we'll do the tree trunk next. And then we're pretty much getting there, pretty much done. And for the tree trunk, just gonna use a little bit of wildwood. And this is really important that you take your time with this and you're really careful because if you spill it over anything that you don't want to then you're gonna to have to start again and repaint uh, rebase rather some of the bits so just work it around with the brush all the way around the tree all the way around the roots And then once you're done with that, we've just got the ground to do. And we'll let the, we'll let everything dry, and then we'll decide what colour we're going to use on the ground. So that's working out pretty nicely on there. And I think I probably, on reflection, probably should have done this first. But I'm just going to use some agarax agaros dunes for the the mud. I was going to use wildwood, but I think that will have been too. Uh, too similar to the tree so I'm just going to throw this on I'm using a small brush so I can get in between the the vines just like that so I'll get this done get it all covered and I'll put a black rim on the base I think and then we'll uh, we'll get this model on the turntable ready to see how she looks So there we have it, this Mermon Banshee is ready for action. Thanks for watching, I really hope you've enjoyed. If you have, please leave a like and a comment down below. This is a really easy, straightforward tutorial, which means you can get great results fast. Don't forget, you can use the links in the description to find my recommended equipment, including those makeup brushes, and you can also get 20% off all your wall gaming needs at Goblin Gaming if you're in the UK or the EU. Thanks again for watching, I'll see you next time.